So now we start getting into what we in the law professor community call issue spotting, defining whether you have a particular copyright issue with an activity with respect to a work that you want to use in your research project. So our goal here is to give you information about what aspects of copyright law are near universal and what main variations there are so you can identify or do the research necessary to identify whether you have a copyright issue in that particular country. So to answer the specific question in regard to a specific country, you may have to do more research or consult with a particular expert in that field. But this lecture is defined to give you the broad parameters so that you can identify um, where to go, where to research, what to look at. So as we covered in respect to US law, there are two basic stages to any copyright analysis. So first you look at whether the work that you intend to use is protected by copyright, and then you can ask whether the intended activity you intend to undertake is subject to an exclusive right, one of the rights of the right holder to exclude you from that activity. So you're looking at works and you're looking at activities. So if the work and the activity fall within the scope of copyright protection, then you need to look at whether a limitation or exception to the exclusive rights nonetheless permits the activity. So here I just want to cover the international rules on whether works are protected. The scope of protection of copyright law is one area where there's actual fair degree of uniformity between laws. A lot of what you learned with respect to US law will apply to most laws that you find around the world on the issue of scope of protection, and particularly scope of protection of works. The definition of protected works in every copyright law around the world is incredibly broad, the, the initial definition, if you don't apply the exceptions to it. And this is in part because international law requires a very broad definition of protected works. So you've heard previously that the main international treaty in this area is the Berne Convention for the Protection of Literary and Artistic Works, which dates back to the late 1800s. In part by its incorporation into the WTO's agreement on trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, nearly every country in the world now is a member or applies the standards of the Berne Convention to their laws. And also by virtue of its long history, nearly every copyright in the world reflects its standards. So the Berne Convention defines a protected work in extremely broad terms. You can see the terms on this slide here. Every production in the literary, scientific, and artistic domain, whatever may be the mode or form of its expression. So it needs to be an expression, but beyond that, there's an incredibly broad scope. It can be in any mode, it can be in any form, it's any kind of production in this very broad sweep of domains. And the list that you see here is not exclusive. It's illustrative. So it's that initial clause that every production in the literary, artistic, and scientific domain, whatever the mode or form, that's the applicable standard. And these, by virtue of the word such as, that's actually kind of a magic phrase in copyright law that we'll get back to. It's the same words that you see in fair use. It makes the list following that such as illustrative rather than exclusive. So a lot of the things that you may be intending to use are clearly protected and actually listed. So books and all writings, lectures, addresses, sermons, dramatic or dramatico-musical works, so that would include plays, cinemagraphic works, entertainments in a dumb show is one that you might not come across very frequently, but nonetheless protected. Musical composition, cinematographic works, works of drawing, painting, photography, works of applied art, even architecture illustrations, maps, plans, etc. So if you stop there and consider for the moment the breadth of this standard, you know, what might you want to use in your text and data mining project that is not a work that's potentially protected by copyright under this broad standard? So one area that you may be thinking is government works, right? So laws, legislative history, court cases, government reports, and the like. So in the United States, these materials are not subject to copyright. They may be copied freely by anyone. They are part of the public domain. 
There are websites that you may be familiar with that have court cases and laws um, on them that are publicly accessible and free to copy. But that's not true in every country. You see in Bern Article 2, the Bern Convention allows, but does not require, an exemption for official text such as laws. And many countries, including the UK and many Commonwealth countries whose copyright law was taken, copied from, delivered by the UK, contain that so-called crown copyright, which gives the government a copyright in laws and government works. So you may need permission, absent a limitation and exception, which we'll be talking about, to make copies of even basic public texts like laws. So what about old works? So you have covered with respect to US law, the time limits on copyright that can permit you to copy and mine and use for any purpose older works at will, specifically works that are older than 70 years beyond the life of the author. Now note that the US has a longer term than Byrne requires. The Byrne Convention states a minimum required term of the protection of life the author plus 50 years, not 70. But as the U.S. demonstrates, countries may protect copyright for longer terms, and many do. And the U.S. rule is not, unfortunately, the maximum. This is a map from Wikipedia of the different copyright terms around the world. And as you can see, most of the countries in Africa and Asia protect copyright for life plus 50 years, the Byrne standard, and sometimes even less. So not all countries actually have signed on to the Byrne limits, but you'd have to not be a member of the WTO to also not be following the Byrne limits. But there are a few countries that actually still do fall in those categories. And Byrne itself actually allows countries to apply lower terms for some works. In particular, photographs can be protected for as few as 25 years after the creation of the work rather than the life of the author. But about half the countries in the world protect works for longer than life plus 50 years. And it's Mexico, not the United States, that tops that list with a term for literary works of life plus 100 years after the death of the author. The result in any case is that there is no one universal rule that applies to every country. Some older works may be subject to copyright in the United States, but not in the public domain overseas, and vice versa. Some materials may be in the public domain in the United States, but not in the public domain overseas. And by public domain, I mean that copyright has no control over that item, that the work is beyond the term of copyright protection. So if you go through this inquiry and you find that given the broad scope of Burns' scope of protection and given the long terms that exist in some countries, you decide or assume that the work is protected by copyright, then the question is whether there are, um, whether the activity that you intend to undertake with respect to that work is protected. And then if we answer yes to both of those, then we'll need to go to limitations and exceptions to copyright. So in the next section, which is the next video, we'll start filling out that second column of the TDM worksheet that you should now have um, access to. So go ahead and pull up that worksheet and have it ready for the next video.